Welcome to FCPS All-Stars. Our guest for today is Casey Armstrong, fifth grade teacher from Valley Elementary School. Hello, thank you for coming. Hi, Tiana, thank you. Now I'm gonna jump right into the interview and say that I know that it's very important for you as a fifth grade teacher to make sure that your students know how to add and subtract. But I think you go above and beyond the call of duty because in the last five years, you've gone from being single yeah. to being married to having your son Easton, and then now you've got yet another addition. Right, there wasn't enough crazy. So yeah, <laughs> no, I just had a, a, I have my son Easton who's 21 month old toddler, and then I just had a baby girl nine weeks ago, Layton. So Layton. it's busy, but that's you know how we like it. So. In addition to having a demanding career as a teacher, I know that you've had a lot of changes and that in your life in the last five years. What sort of things do you do to keep yourself centered and focused in the midst of all that change? Yeah, I think everyone needs an outlet. Uh, for me, it's always been uh, being active, anything I can do outside. Um, running for me is my, my thing and my mm -hmm. outlet. So, uh, you know, I've done several marathons, half marathons, okay. mud runs are a lot of fun. Um, anything, mud is fun? Yeah, I love the <laughs> obstacle course runs and, and that kind of thing where you just can't take yourself seriously and you just, you know, it's, you think about teaching all the time and it kind of consumes you, but that's sort of my one time where that's all I focus on and it's just a lot of fun. And I know that even though you are having that as your creative outlet yeah. and your outlet for energy, that you also use that in the classroom as well. Tell me about that sort of outlet. Yeah, I mean, for me, it really is uh, helpful to try to bring some of me into my classroom mm -hmm. as well as, you know, get the kids to trust me so they'll bring some of them into my classroom as well. So uh, several years ago when I was at Valley, we started a girls running club and, um, you know, got a lot of girls talking about kind of some of their issues going into middle school, but also just something for them to do after school to keep them active and to kind of have that camaraderie amongst each other before they went into middle school. And then we also did a marathon challenge kind of running club at recess where students would do laps and we would tally them. And over the course of several months, students actually calculated over 26.2 miles really? and entered the Marathon Challenge Club. So it was really neat to see kids when you tell them you're going to run a marathon and their eyes kind of bug out of their head and like there's no way I can do that and to show them that little by little um, after time they accomplish that goal. It was pretty neat to see. Did many of the students meet or exceed that goal? We had a, quite a few. It was just the fifth grade that we did it with mm -hmm. at recess, and because um, we kept hearing kids say I'm bored, so it gave them sort of a focus and a challenge, and we were really surprised, um, not only by how many of them participated, but at you know some of the students that participated were not who we had you know thought would be wanting to participate so it was really neat and even if kids walked some of them would you know have their partners and they'd walk or jog with each other it was it was neat to see so it was great physically and it was great from a relational standpoint in terms of giving your kids an outlet for something to do right. and getting them talking and off their devices and right, really communicating. Right. So yeah, that's like a three for three. That's yeah. a all win. Yeah, it, 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 was, uh, it went better than we had anticipated. It was something we wanted to try. And uh, you know, the teachers even got involved at recess and it was uh, something that we enjoyed doing as teachers, but it was great to see the kids get involved too. Okay. So you shared with us about your outlets, but inquiring minds really want to know, what is your obsession? So anyone that knows me or has worked with me knows that I'm obsessed with football, but particularly the Redskins and the Terps. I'm a University of Maryland graduate, <laughs> and I'm sort of a, a native of this area, so I've grown up a Redskins fan through the thick and thin and uh, try to convert as many students as possible. <laughs> um, we have a little deal that if both teams win in the same weekend, they don't have their homework on Monday. So um, I've had a lot of parents comment that suddenly their children take a vested interest in the scores of the games over the weekend. Um, but it's, it's fun to kind of go back and forth with 
not only students but other staff members and the kids like to see that sort of banter and that relationship and talk to them about things that are sort of outside the academic that you normally talk to them about. Do you think that many kids take the bait? I've got a, quite a few. Come on, I've got a few. <laughs> Changed a well, few. Well, because homework's at stake. So, <laughs> That's <yeah>. true, exactly. <laughs> Now, you mentioned college, mm -hmm. that, that you went to the University of Maryland. Do a lot of kids ask you questions about, like, why do you like the Terps, or why do you like yeah, the Yeah, they skins? do. They ask, because, you know, I have on my wall, I have my Terps memorabilia, and, and they ask me sort of why I have it. And so it's a nice conversation, or a nice way to get them started thinking about college and talk, you know, thinking about their future plans and kind of uh, academic goals beyond uh, you know, middle and high school and, and talk to them about that and also talk to them about maybe where, what were their parents' educational endeavors and goals and mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's, it's funny how you can have these sort of deeper, bigger conversations starting by something as small as like a football game. So. Now speaking of college, it's so great that your students can see that you are proud of your college. You take pride in that and that they can take pride in their school and kind of brag on their school mm -hmm. a bit. Um, but on a more personal note, what do you think is the biggest challenge that your students are facing today? They have a ton of challenges. I mean, they really do. Um, the one that I kind of try to work on the most is a lot of these students come in and they're so fixated on this idea of being perfect and they're so fearful of making mistakes that I think are a necessary part of the process. and getting students to trust me and to trust themselves that failures and mistakes are not end results. They're right. just a necessary evil to, to grow and to go where we need to get to um, and to get them out of that fixed mindset that I'm not good at math or I'm not good at this or I can't do that and to change that vernacular to I might not be great at this right now but I'm gonna get better and to change them into more of a growth mindset is been a challenge, but one that I think is really important that we, that we work on. I've talked to a lot of parents also about the book and you know about uh, letting, because it's hard as a parent now that I'm on the other side, I get mm -hmm. it's, it's hard as a parent to sort of watch your students or your child make a mistake and you just naturally want to jump in and fix things for them, but you know that if we just take a step back and we support them through their mistakes that they really learn so much more in the end. Absolutely. Well Casey, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you. And thank you as well. We look forward to seeing you next week on FCPS All Stars. And don't forget, shine on.